The Second Vatican Council document, Constitution on the Liturgy, Sacrosanctum Concilium, called for a repositioning of the homily as a highly esteemed part of the liturgy. Since that time, our various popes, Pope St. Paul VI, Pope St. John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI, Pope Francis, have all repeatedly emphasized that the homily is to be an integral part of the liturgy. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means much more than that the homily is to be mandatory at a Sunday Mass. It means that the homily is to be seen as a component piece with all of the other liturgical elements of that particular Mass. So that if all the liturgical elements are praising God, glorifying God, are acts of worship, then the homily itself glorifies God, praises God, is an act of worship. Before the Second Vatican Council, before this revisioning of the homily based on patristic thinking, there were many texts on the liturgy that spoke of the homily as something extraneous to, a supplement to the liturgy, but not part of it. Even in the 1960s, there were homiletic texts that talked about the homily as an interruption to the liturgy. And in fact, in earlier practice, when there was preaching outside of Mass, the priest would remove the manifolds, would remove the chasuble to go to preach. And at the end of the homily, would make the sign of the cross so that you could get back into liturgy. And that's why in 1973, the Congregation for the Sacraments and Divine Worship recommended that preachers no longer make the sign of the cross at the end of the homily. They said because that harkens back to an earlier practice in which the homily was not an integral part, was not a liturgical element. So how do we make it a liturgical element? What practically is a preacher supposed to do? Well, one way is to think of the homily as something which is part of a whole flow and therefore does not stand on its own. Preachers do not, think, do not need to think of writing introductions and conclusions for their homilies, for example. The introduction to the homily is the processional hymn and the collect and the readings and everything that goes before the homily. And the homily does not conclude because it is not a distinct unit. The homily hands over into the rest of the Mass. Now, there are several ways of doing this. One way is to pay particular attention to the liturgical text, sometimes called the liturgical Bible. That is, in preparation of the homily, the preacher can do contemplation not just simply on the lectionary text of that, of, for that particular Mass, but what are, are, what are all the prayers of that Mass? What is the collect, the closing prayer, the prayer over the gifts? What are the antiphones? And draw from them their meaning, their pearl, their message, which he then connects together with his contemplation on the lectionary readings. And doing that, he can often find himself preaching significantly on some of the liturgical texts as well. I quite regularly preach, for example, on the colic. Another way of doing this is making specific references in the homily to the liturgical season, to what went on the week before, what we are leading up to, what's going to be developing, what's going to be coming in, in the texts in, and, and in liturgical celebrations uh, in future weeks. Another way is to refer directly to the sacrament of this particular liturgy, to some of the responses that the people will be making. There may, be, for example, be a point in the homily which connects very well to the response of the people before communion. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And so you refer to that, you highlight that in the homily, and when they come to make that response, it invokes the whole homily in them again, and it makes that particular response even more important. Another way is the use of music. There may be op opportunities, there may be times when one is preaching and one has a theme, when there is a particular hymn that really fits very, very well with the point that the preacher wants to be making in that particular homily. In that case, the preacher can quote that hymn or refer to that hymn, sometimes give, give even the backstory of that hymn. 
the hymn Amazing Grace, which, uh, which is written by a former slave uh, trader who then eventually becomes an abolitionist and the man who, and who writes, I was blind but now I see and his later years becomes blind, has a lot of material in it that can really uh, speak for, uh, to the depths of a particular point that the preacher has. So the preacher can make that point and then request the choir to actually sing that hymn, perhaps at the offertory or, or later. And when that hymn is then sung and when the people participate in that, it again invokes the whole homily, they brings the points back to them again. And what it does is extends the homily throughout the whole liturgy. So there are ways in which a preacher can stitch together his homily with all the very liturgical elements. By, and in this way, making the homily richer, and in this way, grounding his homily on the liturgy of that day. And so the homily then becomes an act of worship, an act of praise, an act of glory to God.